Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And today I have a review of my new graphics card um, that I've got for the channel for some uh, game testing. And it is the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti WinForce by Gigabyte. Now the 1050 Ti is the latest Pascal graphics card from NVIDIA and it's basically aimed at budget gamers looking for 1080p high to ultra settings, hitting roughly, you know, between 50 and 70 frames per second. Um, and this is the card that they've basically brought to the table to handle that. Now this card features 768 CUDA cores and unlike the other Pascal graphics card it's not based on 16mm FinFET it's actually made on 14mm um, and for most of the cards as well you can power them from just basically plugging them into the PC. They come straight off the PCIe, but this one actually has a six pin power supply allowing for more overclocking headroom. So I'm gonna go into the specs a little bit more. I'm gonna then show you around the card. We're gonna then run some gaming videos. I'm gonna show you how I've overclocked this to over 1900 megahertz, and then I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. Also, this is my first ever graphics card review. So if there's anything you'd like to see in the future reviews, please tell me. As mentioned earlier, the GTX 1050 Ti comes with 768 Pascal CUDA cores. Now, as for the core clock, there's three profiles with the included software. We'll sit, skip over the silent mode and talk about gaming and overclock. Now, the base runs at 1328 megahertz with a boost at 1442, where the overclocking mo mode has a base of 1354 megahertz and it boosts to 1468. But what I've found from my benchmarking is that it boosts to almost 17. 170 megahertz and I think this is due to the extra six pin power and the fact that this card runs incredibly cool. Now for the memory we've got four gigabytes of GDDR5 running at seven gigabytes per second with a memory bus of 128 bit. I'm going to leave that for specs for now and I'll tell you some more because I want to show you what came in the box and a little look around the card. Moving on to what's inside the box. Now I have a full unboxing on the channel but I couldn't show you an unboxing of all in about 20 seconds. So we're going to open the box and then we can see we have a quick start guide. You have a graphics driver which includes the software that you saw earlier. Um, and then you have the graphics card which did come in anti-static matting. But immediately looking at the card you can see it is an entirely plastic affair. So on the side that wouldn't show into the computer, you can see we've got these orange branding that they're using quite a lot. So there's these orange marks on them. Wouldn't worry about that because it's really hard to see. If your graphics card is facing down, you are not going to see that. But again, it's all plastic. And we have the two um, Windforce 90mm fans that move in a separate direction. Moving on to the money shot, the side that you are going to see. Um, so basically the front of the card is um, it's all in black again with a Gigabyte logo which doesn't light up. Then we have the metal heat pipe and the six pin power that you saw earlier. And now this was one thing I was very concerned about was the top when I first got it because it is plastic. The top of the graphics card is entirely plastic and I was worried about thermals with this, but this card runs ridiculously cool. 60 degrees max. And then moving on to the IO shield. So what we have is a display port, DVI-D, um, and the DVI-D I think is good for 1920 1080 um, at 144 hertz. The display port can go up to 8K. And then we have three HDMI slots, all 2.0B. Bit of a weird mix for me. I would have preferred seeing a few more display ports, but other people might like that. So there we go. There's a look around the card. So I'm going to show you some gaming benchmarks using Shadow Play that I've recorded. So remember, there is going to be a five frames per second drop on what I could actually get. And then I think we better move on to overclocking this graphics card because that's what it was made to do.
dad could have seen this. So there's just a few um, gaming videos of me powering this uh, 1050 Ti with an i5 4690K overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz. And if you want to see loads more footage like that, please go over to the channel. But one thing that did show is that really you can't play ultra at everything. It's still not going to happen. The video do not want to give you ultra 1080p on a budget. They just don't want to do it. They should be doing it, but they don't want to. So Doom ran absolutely fantastic. Battlefield, probably have to set it down to high if you want to hit those 60 frames per second. Um, it will jump up to every now and then, but if you want it solid, you're going to have to go high. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, we had that on very high, um, and it was kicking out about 40 frames per second. I will have to mention I had the AA set to 8 times. If you drop it down to 4, it performs a lot better. And really, that game at between 45 and 60 frames per second runs really well. So, overall, yeah, it's all right. But what about overclocking? So overclocking was quite easy to do. I used MSI Afterburner and I have a whole video on this on my channel. I overclocked it 500 megahertz on the memory, giving me eight gigabytes per second. And then I added 150 megahertz to my core, which gave me my 1911 megahertz boost. So overclocking, it must've hit 60 frames per second. Well, yeah, in some games, but it still doesn't in Tomb Raider, still struggles a bit in Battlefield 1. So here's just a quick um, clip of uh, Star Wars Battlefront. And as you can see, it only really improves my frame rate by five frames per second, which to be fair, it does run pretty well in Ultra and it's 60 frames per second, but it's still only five frames per second. And this is the same across the board on any games I've tested, really not gonna see more of an improvement than five frames per second. So that leads me to think, Although the Gigabyte Wind Force is a good 1050 Ti, for £150, where 1055 pounds are paid, where 1050 Ti is, um, it's about the middle. It's got the six pin power, so you can gain that extra five frames per second. And it's cheaper than a Strix, which is a rip off at 180, 190 pounds. But the RX 470 is now near enough the same price as this graphics card. In fact, with the sales that are going on this Christmas, you can pick up an RX 470 for 150 pounds. It's 40% faster, and also anyone that's upgraded a monitor recently, your monitor probably has free sync, which means then you're gonna be able to go up to 75 hertz, 75 frames per second, smooth, buttery gameplay. So where does this card fit in? Content creators. Anyone wanting to create content on a budget, starting a YouTube channel, using the CUDA, the built-in CUDA with this card, that's gonna be great. Um, the power, if you do not buy one for six pin power, you're only gonna lose five frames per second and you can just pop it in any PC. Yeah, sort of get that, that's all right. Um, and then also they're bringing out low profile versions of this like they did with the 750 Ti so you can fit it in those little second hand Dell PCs you can get off eBay. That's all great. But the main reason we buy a graphics card is for gaming and I really don't think this graphics card delivers as well that it should have. It should have been closer to a 970. I own a 960, I've had a 950. I know the 1050 Ti runs better but I don't really feel like there's much of an upgrade. If you've got either of those two cards, 
I would upgrade to something, save up a bit more and buy a 1060 if you are a NVIDIA fanboy, if you can take the move over, if you're not content creating, if you don't need to use Shadow Play and stuff like that, buy an RX 470. Anyway, that's my first ever graphics card review. I know I messed it up in a few places. My audio is normally pretty crap, but the rest of my content on my channel is gold. So please go over and please subscribe. Thank you.